What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to the Doghouse Podcast with your host, J-Rod and... J-Dog. What episode are we at? 37? 37. 37. Wow. Give me a high five. We still are not making any money. <laughs> hey. <laughs> I hope that guy is still watching us said we want to make it to 10. Yep. You better still yep. be here. What about now, brother? <laughs> <laughs> um, with that being said, we it's now October... And I have fully gone into character, gotten into character, yep. sunken into the festive nice. uh, mood. Bought some pumpkins, bought a pumpkin <laughs> carving kit. You didn't waste no time, huh? No time. <laughs> Immediately, nighttime last night was October first. I shower up. I'm like, I know exactly what I'm gonna wear. Got my pajamas on, full fucking skeleton. Kit. I saw that. Fucking perfect. I saw that. I've had that kit for years. I I wear it every Halloween. Really? Yeah. Oh my god. <laughs> it's it's awesome. Uh, I I've been planning the or yeah planning stuff to talk about for the Halloween episode. I have a few topics that I wanted to, to talk about. To wait until that episode. Oh, absolutely, or? yeah. Interesting. Yeah. Well, it's got kind of Halloween themed. Okay. All right. All right. All right. All like all right. Just a little bit of everything. Yeah, I hear that. Yeah. Did. So, oh yeah. So, if you guys have any Halloween topics, that oh, you think we I gotta look at that about. poll on Instagram. See that poll put up in the vlog oh, house. Oh yeah, yeah. Let me see. Let me see. Uh, but yeah, if you guys have any questions uh, or Halloween related topics that you guys want us talking about, drop a comment down below. Get it. And hopefully, we'll. What's what is it? It's Batman. Batman and Robin. I went <laughs> went in by a few votes. Motherfuckers. <laughs> put the thing down right now. <laughs> mm. Uh, I feel like I'm I'm down for either or. Yeah, I do think that Batman and Robin works better because Deadpool has a full face mask. Yeah, and oh, like, true. It's not like the true. movies where they have CGI. The only reason shit. why I want Deadpool and Wolverine is because I just like Deadpool better. <laughs> that's, <laughs> that's literally it. It's I'm uh, like I'm a fan of Deadpool. I feel like but... it's a more fitting combo. Yeah, for yeah. us. Yeah, um, you're definitely more Deadpool, and I'm definitely Wolverine. Yeah. Um, but with that being said, Batman and Robin ain't, the, ain't the too fan, far off. The fan, the Batman and Robin ain't too far off, and the fans are voting. Mm. So, guys, go continue to vote for Deadpool and Wolverine. <laughs> <laughs> um, what's the um, what? what do, where did we leave off last episode? Because we were talking about. All right, I re, I remember where we kind of left off, but uh-huh. can I touch on my third favorite animal? Ah, uh, yes. Okay. Yes. Um, uh, I have a third. I have a new, not I wouldn't say new, but my third favorite animal, uh, based off one video I saw last night. One single video. One you're, single you're video, sold. and I was like, "Yeah, he's definitely in my third, my third spot for favorite wow. animal." Yeah, I'll, I'll show you the video. It's not even like top three. Like you're dead set. Like this guy's number three. He's three because number one will always be a tiger. Oh. Number two, uh, as an armadillo. Um, oh. I'm dealing all these stuff, number two. Armadillos, keep uh, digging. They're, they're chill, dude. And then I saw this video of a sloth, and I was like... Don't they carry, like, a bunch of diseases? Boom. Yeah. <laughs> Pretty cool. <laughs> oh, did you did you send it to me? Maybe. With a shovel? <laughs> <laughs> I said, what the fuck? <laughs> They're so slow. Ew. How are they alive? Look at them riding that shit, dude. <laughs> My God. I saw that. One, I was like, fuck, I am deep in the rabbit hole. <laughs> Rails, dude, I got to get off now. <laughs> and then at the same time, I was like, I don't know. This is pretty sick. <laughs> so you, why why is that number three? Because they just don't give a fuck. And, and why is Armadillo number two? Because they're just... Maybe based off another video as well, but, <laughs> but so I went, so I went to the zoo uh, a few months ago mm-hmm. and they had an, uh, an armadillo there. And every time I see an armadillo in an animal exhibit, they're just sick. Like they just don't give a shit. If people are trying to look at them, they're hiding. They don't care. Mm-hmm. You just paid 50 bucks to be in here. Mm-hmm. They're hiding. They don't like, want your attention. Yeah. They don't give a shit, dude. They'll ball up in a ball and they even look at you. And I'm just like, <laughs> I like that. I literally went to the zoo and there's Armadillo. He is sta- he's out in his exhibit and all these people are like, oh my God, Armadillo. They all hold around. He swear to God, he's just like, <laughs> Rick runs inside his house like, fuck y'all. Turns around, I swear to God, Jay. He turns around and just peeks around the corner, looks at everyone, 
goes back mm -hmm. in. So everyone goes to an angle where you can see it into the angle. Yeah. There's a wall there, and he's gone. And everyone's like, where did he go? <laughs> everyone's like trying to peek, and you couldn't find him. And I was like, that's my guy. I like it. <laughs> I was like, I, I like, like that guy. <laughs> and they all act the same when I see him. So I was like, that became my second favorite animal. Interesting. Yep. Interesting. And why is tiger number one? Because uh, they're just badass. Hmm. Yeah. Badass, chill, don't give a fuck. Those are my three. Interesting. Those are my three favorite traits. So, if you could be any uh, any animal in the world, what what animal would you? Eagle. Be? Eagle. Yep. I've already thought about this. <laughs> I have too. Why eagle? Because they have no predators, and the only predators they would have would be humans, and it's illegal to hunt eagles in America. So you're 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 golden. You're set. Mm. Do I, I can do whatever the hell I want. That's why I said. That's why I came to the conclusion of eagle. It's interesting you say eagle because I don't have eagle, but I would be, I've always, it's always been like, okay, I want to be something that can fly, mm. right? Yeah. For transportation, That'd be cool. right? So fly, so I'd have to be some sort of bird. Yep. So, and then I'm like, well, I'm not going to be like a fucking, <laughs> little, be like a bitch bird. <laughs> like a bitch bird. Yeah. I'm not going to be a fucking, uh, what's it, what's it called? Like a a little hummingbird or something. Yeah, I might like. be a hummingbird. Fucking <laughs> hit a window, you kill yourself yeah, by yeah. accident. You know, I'm gonna be a fucking pr like a apex predator. A fucking. <laughs> <laughs> so I came to the conclusion that it would be some some sort of falcon. Mm. Some sort of falcon. Um, I'm not. I'm not sure what breed, but whatever's the most dangerous. That those are pretty badass. Me. Those are the ones that can get up to like. Don't quote me, but I'm pretty sure I'm right. Like 200 miles per hour, and they dive bomb. Like it's something crazy, That's dude. Crazy. Yeah, it's like shoof, they can yeah. dive bomb. It's crazy. We, uh, out back, we have uh, this like a hummingbird feed. Hummingbirds go around and fucking uh, feed. They just sit there and fucking s mm. suck up sugar water, I guess. Mm -hmm. And uh, every once in a while, you'll just see a falcon just snatch one. Yep. Damn. I don't know if it's Damn. a falcon, but some some bigger bird is grabbing that motherfucker. Yeah, yeah, just... yeah. I don't I don't think there's any bird that would hunt a falcon. I don't know. I, I wouldn't fucking, think so. They look intimidating. Like sometimes when they're not quickly uh, snatching shit, you'll see them surveilling at in the, mm -hmm. the top of the trees. Like falcons, like hawks. They kind of all give that same vibe and when they're sitting still especially a falcon you can kind of tell it's built like a bullet dude that thing's built for like speed sure. like at that. agility speaking of bullets i need to get a gun yes yes i might yes. get a, i might get a gun tomorrow tomorrow uh, yeah because there's i think i have downtime tomorrow mm -hmm. so i'll probably go check out check out the range or something. the range yeah. yeah um what'd you get you got a glock right yeah the glock 43x that's right. I've gone back to the range four times. Why? Looking for a holster. No holster. Every time I go, it's rare if they have the Glock 43X. It's always sold out. And then if there is one, it's there'll be like one left, and it's for the left hand. And I'm looking for one for a right hand. For the holster. For the holster. And I'm just like, all right, am I going to have to get one offline? Probably. I just like buying stuff in store. Like I like having it. <laughs> but you'll drive now. four times to a store before buying it online yeah because like i'll get a feeling of like all right i if i want the holster that means i want it right now so i'm gonna go get it right now and so then if it's not there then i'm like all right well then i don't want it anymore <laughs> so i go back home a few days go by i'm like well now i want it again <laughs> i want it right now so i go get constant rotation <laughs> yeah so i should i should ultimately buy one offline but i always just like to see what i'm getting you know what I, I guess mean? so yeah but I feel that way with like clothes and shit, which it's I mainly don't clothes, do like clothes, yeah. shopping, but um, Bible. Mm. Did you, do you had something to say last podcast? Yeah. I was going to say when, cause you said you brought the Bible with you on your trip to across Europe. the, the world, across oh the God, planet more earth. Shit, more shit to talk about as well. Oh yeah. That. You were mentioning some stuff. I was like, Oh, you even mentioned that in yeah. the podcast. Um, but yeah, I was gonna be like, was there anything that you like, I don't know. This this is just me. I'm I'm weird. Was there anything like on the train or something? Like you read something, it clicked, or you're staring out to the mountains and you see a burning bush talking to you, you know. 
<laughs> you know, you know, um, you know what I'm talking about, right? <laughs> I know what you. T- I know exactly what you're talking about. No, no, okay, not, not yet. Yeah, not yet. I, I, uh, one, I'm a very slow reader. Mm-hmm. If you guys can't tell, <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, I don't think I, I've read it enough to mm-hmm. to start, you know seeing what you're talking about yeah um that was a little more as like a joke toward just like i don't know it, you read something oh you read something and just like while you were out maybe you saw a human human interaction or something that kind of made you think like wow yeah we are fucked or people are like you know something like that like just seeing some sort of interaction that's kind of more nah, of what i meant nah nothing nothing yet nothing yet okay. i will like to uh i've just been so fucking busy mm-hmm. it's, really it's not so a bad busy. thing uh, last night I did have, I did have, I guess, downtime, but it was, it was, uh, like we were going to watch a movie and then the woman passed off. Yeah. The woman passed out and I was like, all right, well, I'm going to play Outlast. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't played video game in like a, over a month. I'm like, yeah. fuck, I want to play this. I the play video this you game. sent me, I was like, oh my what? God. Uh, you just, dude's over here doing this by himself. Yeah. <laughs> like. <laughs> I, just, I, just, I, I know what your room looks like over here so I can just visualize you in there in the pitch dark just like man let me record this and send it <laughs> I'm just like oh my god Dude, I was out there hunting the new guy oh yeah there's, new, there's a new guy I mean you oh, like an update there's, yeah there's an update so this is the audio it's a, I... <laughs> so y'all hear this I've seen this video. It's not a. Uh, it's not. It's not for the week. <laughs> so this was me. It was. I did an entire trial by myself, which is like the longer thing to do. Good God. Um, I did it all alone. I That's didn't, terrifying. It is terrifying. I was very scared. I did. It took me over an hour. Was the room dark? To, oh, it's pitch black. Good. Yeah. Uh, and over an hour. Yeah, over an hour. Wow, it's like seventy-two minutes or something. Damn. Yeah, I was out there. Yeah, you were out, out there, there yeah. and you're. Um, <laughs> so essentially, for this trial, I had to take uh, drugs, and then poison it. So I had to put it, po- yeah, poison the drugs, and then take the drugs. Oh, take drugs as in like physically, like physically, not, not, not yeah, not okay, consume. Okay, like, take the drugs, put it into a machine, put poison into the machine, crank the machine. And all throughout this entire sequence, you're being hunted, and for, the drugs aren't just like right next to the fucking machine. Like you got to go all across the map, get all these things, and whatnot. So did all that alone. And then I take the drugs to the ship, and then the ship at the at the ship bottom, is in boat. There's a ship like a boat, yeah. Uh, take it to the boat. On the inside, there's two people on on a table <laughs> there's two people on a table and you're holding the i'm holding the drugs mm-hmm. and it just says cut them open <laughs> oh you had to do the cut i had to take a saw and oh cut there from the, in the video they were already cut open with the one yeah. you sent me yeah so i cut across from the, like their chest all the way down <laughs> to like you know their cock and then just stuff their body with drugs, um, and then wow. it's like, okay, you can you can leave now. You're done. <laughs> Thank you. But throughout this entire sequence, I'm being hunted. What's the um, new guy like? What's, what's the new guy like? Um, it's crazy. He has a ranged weapon. What? A ranged he has weapon? A shotgun. What? Oh yeah, my! That's fucking that, scary. That is ho- range. That's Shoot. hard to deal with. Yeah, it's hard to deal with. Shit. You gotta like. You, more angles and shit you know it's not just like dude we need to i don't know if jim can make this happen or someone we need to like halloween special a obviously a podcast with some sick costumes Mm -hmm. and or b like a stream of us playing video games of outlast trials i honestly i don't think i don't know if that stuff can be posted on youtube what do you think about that jim Cause if I saw that, if I oh, you're saying the gore, mm. the gore. We well, just blur out the parts that's. Yeah. You can, like, blur it. yeah. Hmm. Be a lot of blurring. <laughs> it would be a lot of blurring, yeah. Cause we're pretty, yeah. It's 
It's fucked up shit. I think they'll tune in for like Al's reaction. For sure, for sure. Oh, true. It could be just reaction based. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So what would we do? Would we bring two systems in? Let, like bring my system in here and bring his in here? Is that, that's how you play it? Well, no, we we play it uh, like online, but well, he's just at his place. Professionally, you I know there's a way to we could capture Jay's footage on his screen, mm-hmm. capture my footage on my screen very easily. Um, I already have the technology for that for mine. Mm. Cause your boy was a streamer. Um, <laughs> capture both footages, right, and then upload the footage on YouTube screen side by side. Like a split screen, okay. but it's but it's footage of different captured okay, footage from different okay, TVs. Okay. You know what I'm saying? I think we could do that. I don't know how we'd we'd have to have a camera on our setup as well at here than one at my house to catch our face. Yeah, and you can put them down in the corner. But that, that's what I'm saying. Like, two, should we have two separate cameras recording us separately, or should we just come in here and like the easiest not way to film do- a podcast? Just film this. Like mm. us playing side mm. by side. D- Still film the the gameplay on the screen so it can be. Uploaded to the YouTube, video. Mm, but also like a video of just, just us, us yeah, side yeah, by yeah. Side playing. That'd be cool too. That would be cool. That'd be kind of cool, right here. Yeah, right here. Turn the lights off. Yeah, <laughs> just just like have like two lights like on our face. You can only see our face. It'd <laughs> <laughs> uh, be scary. Right. It would be scary. That yeah. would be a bad idea. I'm not. I'm not opposed to this. Yeah, I'm not opposed. I guess. Yeah. Let us comment down below. Let us know if you're you guys would like to see something like this. Are you allowed to film in those? Haunted um, Usually houses. Not. Yeah, I didn't think so either. Yeah. Usually not. Boo. Yeah. Just do it yeah. Yeah. Have a little GoPro. Yeah. Yeah. If you film with the phone, they definitely tell you not to. Yeah, yeah. I've done it before. Yeah. But, uh, All right. yeah. I, I was thinking about going home for, for Halloween, but um, I think I'm, I might have a seminar. Mm. In Oklahoma. Oh, that's possibly. right. You're saying that Oklahoma, yeah. Yeah. So if that's the case, then I'll just stay here for Halloween. Mm. Um, are you? Oh, so what's your, what's going on with your uh, your upcoming trip? When is that? Which one? Super Thirty Two. Uh, that's this weekend. This weekend. Yep. This weekend. Yeah, I leave Friday. After I leave Friday midday and come Same. back Sunday. Okay. You leave this Friday. I leave this Friday and I'll be Where are you going? back on the 11th. I'll go to Salt Lake City, Utah for the UFC fights. Oh, that's right. And then Oh, fuck. Do UFC fights are on this weekend? Yeah, Alex Alex Pereira versus and and Nicky Rod's match. Yeah, Nicky Rod will be competing in Vegas, so they fly us to Salt Lake and then we'll be there for 2 days and then we go straight to uh Vegas. Who's Alex fighting? Khalil Roundtree, I think. Hmm. Like big, big black guy. Big, big black guy. Yeah. yeah. Hopefully, I can watch those whales, fights. Whales, fucking on. <laughs> Scary. Yeah. Um. Yeah, I'm kind of, I'm kind of hung up on this, uh, this Outlast. I like this idea with Outlast. I yeah, I think it'd be really cool. Um, it'd be fun. Yeah. Oh yeah, the update. Yeah. So they updated it. It's uh. Just they just added the the new shotgun guy. They added a new guy. Um, but they changed up uh, a few things with like uh. The layout of the trials. So technically, mm. I think we can do do the trial, like the fi- final trial to escape. But I don't want to escape. I want to do more <laughs> trials. I don't want to escape. I want the journey <laughs> and the horror. Um, no, yeah, no, you got to earn it for sure. You can't yeah. just get out. Yeah, absolutely. I want to like complete everything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then escape. We are interrupting the broadcast to announce our partnership with St. Pasta Sauce. Today we're going to be going over the dog's favorite meal, right? Starts with some ground meat, preferably bison, grass-fed 100%, mm. as well as some spaghetti, right? Any pasta you want, but for today we're going with some classic spaghetti. And last but not least, the essential St. Pasta sauce. Well, why St. Pasta, Jay? Why St. Pasta? I'll tell you why. Let me hear it. All right, so firstly, there's no added sugars or preservatives, and they're made fresh with California tomatoes. Secondly, their sauce is slow cooked for three hours. No other sauce does this in the business. 
St. Pasta Sauce releases one batch per month and they're always selling out. So make sure you guys subscribe to their email list so you guys can stay updated on the releases. If you guys want free shipping on your first order from St. Pasta Sauce, make sure you guys use code DOGHOUSEPOD. That is D-A-W-G-H-O-U-S-E-P-O-D. DOGHOUSEPOD for free shipping on your first order. Make sure you guys check them out. I'm gonna hold it some, okay? You have to put it all the way in. Okay, okay. Just breathe out it. Mom, can you just do it? I know I shouldn't curse in front of my mom, but cauliflower ear sucks. I use Kalibud's ear magnets. I really wish I would have had these magnets, but my ears were messed up. These keep my cauliflower ear at bay. They're the original and best quality cauliflower ear magnets on the market. Step one, drain your ear. Step two, pick your buds. Step three, put them on your ear. Make the right decision. Invest in these Kali buds so your ears don't look like chicken nuggets like mine. <laughs> Check them out on Amazon or KaliBuds.com. Add ears. Train with your buds. Make it. Um. What's going on with uh we I feel like we never talk about jujitsu. Yeah. I mean <laughs> <laughs> kind of the mind bars. Talk about yeah. some mind bars. Mind bars, yeah. Yeah. Uh, um yeah, I mean what how was how was your first practice back from being gone? Did it feel good? It's, it's been good. It's uh definitely obviously different intensity. I saw you so. and Nicky Rod banging it out. Yeah, I was Yesterday. scrapping with Nicky Rod, scrapping, scrapping with you. We did that mount round. I tried mm -hmm. to yes. break your back. Yes, tried to break my neck, cracked it f three or four times. Oh, your neck. Yes, yes, yeah. yes, yes. Oh, right. How did I do that? <laughs> oh, was uh, it uh, mother's milk? It, might, it wasn't the mar mother's milk. I feel like it was something tighter. Oh, my, really? my neck was like tighter. What, what? Mm. I think it might have been a head and arm. Oh, like a Rotolatine? You were told to that's what it was. Yeah, yeah, it's a Rotolatine. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I've been, I've been working that. That stuff. was the it's one. It's good. It's really strong. strong. It is strong. Like, it's hard to escape. Like, once it's locked up, it's like... Yeah, once it's locked up, it's like, uh, fuck. Yeah. This is rough. Yeah. Nicky Rod's really good at those. Rotolatine. Rotolatine. You got long arms, though. He's got long arms, too. And he's got... Put, his your, just put your arm up next to mine. Let's get shoulder. God, God damn it. I mean, I mean, it's not too bad. That makes a that makes a big difference for sure, for sure. I was hoping it'd be longer. <laughs> <laughs> My excuse has withered away. <laughs> I think yeah, it's it's uh like length. Oh, it also like the way people see it aside from numbers without looking at the numbers, mm -hmm. like the actual length of my arms. People are like, I just I look long. Yeah. So people are like, oh, you like you have long arms. Like yeah, yeah, yeah. That's an advantage for you. It's like my arms aren't that. As long as you think, yeah. yeah. What do you What do you think about the match with um? What do you think Nicky Rod's approach should be to Michael Pixley? I don't think it matters. Yeah, really, his his just default approach would it would win the match most likely. I think he. Yeah, I think he he he's capable of beating him everywhere. Yeah, he's the, in wrestling. You know, Michael Pixley would. Like accolades wise and whatnot, he's definitely a better wrestler. Yeah. Um, but it's not it's not a wrestling match. Yeah. Jujitsu. Jujitsu. You know? Yep. Uh, there's a lot of shit that you can get away with in a in grappling when you're on the feet wrestling. Mm -hmm. But you can't get away with those same things in a wrestling match. Mm, yeah. Um, you know, shoes, grip, traction. Yeah. Yeah. You know, if someone gets a single leg on you, you can't limp leg how you limp leg in, in jujitsu. You know, yep. your your shoes getting stuck on there. Yeah, yeah. On the arm and whatnot. Yeah, I think um, Pixley's Pixley has had enough experience to kind of understand those differences by now. I think sure. he's been doing it long enough where he yeah. understands differences. But yeah, I think it, if he were to have it an advantage anywhere, it would be wrestling. Yeah. But Nicky Rod's wrestling is at a level where it's like it's not as much as an advantage as it is with Pixley against other people. You know what I mean? Uh, what what do you what was that? So like the only advantage Pix Pixley would have in the match against Nicky Rod would be wrestling, mm -hmm. but because 
Nikki Raj wrestling is good too. It's not much as an advantage yeah, it's not too, to be good at wrestling as it advantage. would be compared to maybe him going against someone else. Yeah, yeah right. It's sure. like, eh. yeah. So it's gonna be. It's gonna be a good match. I think like Pixie is not. He's not gonna fucking back down from, from Nikki Rod. Um, yeah. He's gonna you know fully commit to try a lot of shit. And if Nikki Rod beats him, then Nikki Rod could say he's beaten Mary Ali. Pretty much. Pretty much. Pretty much, yeah. That's some Craig Jones <laughs> shit. <laughs> but it's like uh, <laughs> fucking Mary Gally won't fucking fight fight Nikki Rod. Like, really? Oh, I'll, I'll fight Craig first, and then I'll fight you. Yeah, yeah. Super fucking weird. Super yeah, that weird. whole game and whole world is just like, come on. It's just gay. Yeah. That's a good way to put it. It's just gay. It's a good way to put it. Yeah. What about... If, uh, if you truly wanted to fucking be the best and like, compare yourself... Um, to like your level, you know, mm -hmm. c c competing, losing in competition shouldn't fucking matter to you. Yeah. Uh, these people that are like picking and choosing fights, it's like. How would you answer that deal. question if it's like, okay, it doesn't matter to me, but it matters to all the people who are paying my bills. Yeah, but it's. Would that change anything? Well, it's, it's the same instance for me. Like I fought this Muhammad guy at Polaris. I don't give a fuck. All the That's same true. people. Like, I know every time I go out there, I'm going to try my fucking hardest. And I know no matter what, win or lose, people will enjoy watching me it, compete. I was going to say, here's the catch, though. Your your aura and branding and your aura is, like, there even if you lose. Some people's yeah. branding and aura is solely built around only if they win. Yeah, yeah, I see. You know? Yeah. Where it's, like, you're the type of aura J-Rod has. It's, like, win or lose, it doesn't really affect your aura too much. Yeah. Which, which is... Which is hard to get an aura like that, but some it people is. like it is. People, <laughs> but people like people like Marigali, all his posts, social media posts, is about Confidence, about being about undefeated. Yeah, yeah, I don't yeah. lose, blah blah blah. So it's like those people have to pick their matches a little bit better because it's like yeah. my whole fan base is only my fan base because I win. Yeah, I don't it's interesting. I don't know. I mean, well, I think I guess what I say to that is uh, get better. <laughs> yeah get better yeah um, yeah i mean it's fucking it's you at the end of the day it's like if regardless of your fucking you should be confident in, in your capabilities mm -hmm. if you, like yeah, you talk yeah. all this shit yeah if you, yeah, fuck yeah back it up motherfucker yeah, yeah fight yeah like what how are you gonna fucking talk all this shit that's fair and then not like oh i'm not gonna fight you yeah i'll fight your teammate first yeah yeah what if you can if you say you can beat me then then you shouldn't have any problem Exactly. Taking taking this yeah. match, they, like when when are you, Nikki, Nikki Rod has never fucking turned down a fight unless he has other shit going on, you know, mm -hmm. seminars or some other competitions. It's like Nikki Rod's constantly calling out all these guys. Yeah, you know, there's so many guys that don't. I mean, that just pull out or the dude just won a million dollars and was willing to give it away the day he yeah, got the day a million of, dollars. Literally, he. <laughs> It's, on the TV, I was like, brother, you just got it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> people, oh my God, people will take that and be like, oh, well, like, he doesn't actually mean that. It's a million dollars. Who would do that? Yeah, yeah. I'm telling you, Nicky Rod would. <laughs> Nicky, Nicky Rod truly fucking believes that he is what, the best grappler in the world. Yeah. That's like, it's it's that simple. Um, so that's why he's so confident in doing something like that. Um, and that's why someone like Gordon would turn down a fight. What, like what? What was his reasoning for turning down the fight? Um, reasoning, I'm not sure, but he then made a post later saying that he would do the match under a lot of different circumstances. Meaning, I, I believe in the post he mentioned it had to be like a <clears throat> certain time, time period, uh, time timed match. It had to be a certain rule set. Oh, but basically, I would do it as long as I can make all the rules. Well, but it's like. If you truly believe you're the best crap in the world, then it shouldn't matter. It shouldn't, it shouldn't matter. matter. Just go to fucking UFC Fight Pass and compete in their rule set. Or yeah. go to who's number one, compete in their rule set. It's like, bro. yeah. Yeah. So that's what I saw. If I'm not mistaken, he might have said post. He said, like, he would, he would face Nikki, Nikki Rod and Craig or something like that on the same day. Um, as long as it was like these, all these certain rule sets so it's like when when are you gonna ever see craig jones in the states when was the last time <laughs> yeah, he's gone. he came for cgi right off to fucking columbia or something yeah columbia. Yeah. yeah yes yeah, so that's interesting when it's like yeah whenever someone I, I, it has to come down to gordon just being like 
if it's for two million dollars, then I'm going to make it a rule set that I know I have a better chance in. Yeah, but it's like if you're gonna talk all this shit, what the f- back it up? It brother. should be anywhere. Yeah, it should be anywhere. It should be anywhere. Yeah, like yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh my god! I right, enough of this fucking. Ye- this shit's annoying. Yippee yapper. Yippee yapper. This damn yippee yapping. Yeah. All, right, right. all right, all right, all right, all right, all right. Let's move on. Let's move on. Uh, let's move and, on. What about Andy versus Dante? Oh, that's sick. Yeah, that's a sick match. I think, uh, dude, uh, people don't give Dante enough credit, man. Yeah, I was gonna say Dante. Dante be Dante. dogging people, and everyone's like, "Yeah, he's sub Mika, sub Mika, sub Ethan." So he's sub Ethan. Yeah. Oh, 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 who's number one? Who's number one? Okay, yeah. Um. Then yeah, sub Mika. Mika yeah. has it lost in years, yeah. and he just subbed yeah. him, and everyone's just like, "Whoa." Yeah. yeah <laughs> like what? About it super quick, yeah. What? Yeah. He uh. He definitely doesn't get, get the credit he deserves, I guess. Isn't that crazy? Um, you could be the pound for pound, arguably pound for pound best guy in the world. And if submission. you're, and if, yeah, and if your aura just quite isn't right, people don't yeah, really care too much. Yeah, people just forget about it. That's crazy, yeah. dude. Yeah. Social media, I feel like social media is a factor as well. It's like, you got to fucking be on it. Yeah. It's it, as frustrating as it is. And like, if you want that number to grow and like people. Like, do you think more he, eyes on you and fuck in turn more money coming coming into your pocket? Mm-hmm. So you have to kind of. Do you out. think that the amount of work or extra work it took Dante to be able to beat someone like Mika has he gotten the same return and money from that win? I don't know. I don't know what his what his income's like. Yeah. Um. Yeah, I'm not sure. It's, I would hope so. I would, as I said, I would I hope sure so would too. Hope but it just so. doesn't seem like, yeah. like on social media and stuff, like people are just don't yeah. give giving him the attention. It's yeah. just like, damn, that dude's a dog. Maybe, maybe he just doesn't like flex it or he doesn't care too much. Up, doesn't care at all. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Fuck it. it yeah, like that's that's uh, kind of priceless in in its in itself as well. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know, not giving a fuck. Yep. Um. What what else is oh yeah a- Andy versus yeah Andy Dante. versus I think, Dante I think Dante wins yeah uh, Dante is a bit smaller I guess because he he competes at 55. he's a strong dude man um, from what I've from what I've seen and heard but uh or no he does he compete at he has competed at fifty five before he competed at fifty five against Ethan yeah Dante that's right, did that's right yeah but this last ACC was at seventy seven yeah so one sixty nine yeah yeah uh so I guess technically same weight class Dante Dante is smaller than him. Uh, but really, Dante being, smaller than Andy. Yeah. Hmm. Oh, if he can make uh, one fifty-five, mm, can, can Andy make 50, 55? I yeah, know. yeah, yeah. Okay, I think yeah, I think um, Andy's got definitely a, a bigger frame. Bigger frame for more for, sure. for more weight. Um, Dante's built like a fucking house. Though. Yeah, he's thick, man. Um, yeah, dense, dense, boy. dense. Yes. Uh, but with that being said, yeah, I think Dante. You think he wins by that. sub? I think if there is a submission, it would be Dante. Hmm. Uh, I don't. I don't know if Andy is capable of submitting, and if if he is capable of submitting him, then it would be probably like you know one of those arm bars that he does, or like a flying submission, flying catch him a flying submission. submission. Yeah, something like that. Yeah. Um. Whereas you know Dante, I think he'd be pretty like a pretty dominant uh, yeah. submission. But we'll see. Fucking dude, like this sport is just like a coin flip. Fun. It really is, dude. It's every year that goes past it's become it's becoming more and more of a coin flip. It's weird. Yep. yep. Like, yeah. So I'm realized I've realized it's starting to become more like that. Just like bro, you don't know what this bracket's gonna turn out like. Yep. <laughs> like Yeah, that and also it's like uh rule sets. There's so such a mm-hmm. wide variety of rule sets. So it's a wide variety of judging. So yeah. It's a wide variety of... It's always changing, too. It's always changing. There's always additions. There's always some sort of, uh, you know, someone's changing, tweaking this rule this way or whatever. It's like there's always something going on for it to, like, the athletes are also keeping up. You know, it's, it's hard. Mm-hmm. Like, at wrestlers, they just, like, if you're training for freestyle to be an Olympic fucking freestyle gold medalist, you're training freestyle yeah, wrestling. Pretty, yeah, pretty simple. It. For jiu-jitsu, it's like, oh, well, I'm training for ADCC rule set, and then two weeks after that, I'm training for EBI rule set, and then two weeks after that, I'm training for uh, whatever the fuck else. It's like, yeah, and then all the different so rule sets seem to like really change your game and style, too. Absolutely. So imagine always having to change your style rather than, o- than to always be kind of like honing in on, yeah. like, in, like like you said, freestyle wrestling. Take them down, roll them. That, that's, that's the game it. plan yeah. every time. It's Get a, good at that. 
everyone just trains for that role set. Yeah, yeah. That's it. It's so frustrating. It is frustrating. You know, it's like, if I, B team, you know, people are always competing. Year round, essentially, we're trying, generally trying to train for an 80cc rule set. Because mm-hmm. that's kind of like our Olympics. But then at the same time, it's like... Uh, yeah, train where the money's at too. Train so. where the money's at. So like, or maybe uh, you know, Nikki Raj training for ADCC, but then Ethan at the same time is also getting ready for EBI. Mm-hmm. So it's like, fuck, these guys can't like, uh, not that they would train together necessarily, but it's like, well, these guys can't train together, or we yeah, can yeah. go over techniques together, not not together, but just like, just not honing towards the same thing. Like, yeah, you're saying. It's yeah, yeah, frustrating. it is frustrating. Yeah, Nikki Rod asked me if I wanted to do. Uh, EBI in Mexico, oh, yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, it was a, uh, apparently a big bracket. They're looking around for some guys to do from B team. That'd be sick, dude. Uh, yeah, apparently PJ Barch is in it. Like, like oh, big, yeah. big names yeah. that get shot at, but it's at one seventy, and which is fine. That's you, dog. That uh, yeah. I'm like three or four pounds under. I'm telling you. And these guys, dude, I'm telling have you. Have you seen? P- have you seen PJ when he comes into the room? I'm telling you, dog. Big fucker. He's big. <laughs> I'm telling you. Mika goes that way, dog. Do I look like Mika? <laughs> Do I look like Giancarlo? <laughs> That's true. That's 35 true. 35 pounds lighter than him. 30 pounds, 35 pounds and it, lighter. And it made him. a difference to him. You probably would have beat him if he wasn't. Absolutely. I agree to an extent. But there are mm. pros and cons to both of these things. Yeah. It's not just like I, I think I would have had a better chance of beating him if I had an extra 10 pounds a little on fucking 35. Mm-hmm. But there's like... Me trying to take so like someone like uh, someone built like Nick Mattia, someone similar to me, mm. as compared to trying to take the back of Ethan. Taking Ethan's back is so much more difficult because mm. there's just less smaller. Yeah, there's less. His torso is way down here, and my yeah. fucking legs are what uh, a lot longer and shit. Yeah, there's yeah. pros and cons. I'm yeah. telling you. You should fucking do it. Yeah. I, don't know. I didn't even know this was a thing. I think you should do it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nick Rod asked me, is it in Mexico, EBI? Are you interested? Am, am I interested? Yeah. Yeah, I'm, I'm obviously interested, but um, I don't know. I, I, It's a mental block for me as far as the weight stuff. Brother. It gets, it gets in my way. Brother. Because I'm just like, man, I'm not. It's, I, that's wrestling. It is. That's it wrestling. It is. It is. That's like. Uh... Well, I think you're right. I think you're like, bro, it's like, you're good enough. To where even against these good guys, maybe you're not good enough to take their back, maybe, but you can stall for seven minutes and then you get put on their back. You, you don't got to be much bigger than someone to strangle them. Exactly. And I was like, oh, that's a fair point. Exactly. It's a fair point. And you're fucking good at escaping the back as well. I've seen your fucking... I was going to say, my my escape. I can get out of Ethan's back control, which I think Ethan has some of the best back control in the world. Absolutely. So... Absolutely. It's cost me two ribs on each side. <laughs> but <laughs> I've gotten out. <laughs> Lily popped my ribs getting out that motherfucker's back. <laughs> <laughs> fucking A. Yeah, dude. Right. What funny. is it? Um, I think sometime in November. Okay. Has um, it been announced or are we just... Has what been announced? DBI? DBI? Yes. Okay, okay. Yes. Um, Sick. Yeah. If, they, they cover travel and shit? I haven't haven't looked that deep into it. I probably need to figure it figure it out soon. If 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 I can do it, then I'll probably just focus on that coming up. Seize I'll, I'll just day. start I'll just start training for EBI. Absolutely. Yeah. Like I think uh right now big two big names I know that are confirmed are PJ Barch and uh Oliver Taza are, yeah. are two. Yeah. When's the next time you think you'll be able to get the chance to compete against PJ Barch? Never again, because I'm retiring in December. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, no, you're right. Yeah, it's, yeah. That's, I think it's, a, it's an opportunity you should take. Yeah. Obviously, oh, but they you, asked Nick Mattia. I think Mattia said, fuck, no, he's not cutting that weight. <laughs> oh, what's he weigh? That's what I'm saying. So That's what I'm saying. Imagine, like, Nick Mattia was, was, was think, they were thinking about Nick Mattia doing that weight. Imagine me going to go, to, it, go against Mattia. 170, yeah. Yeah, he's been looking fucking dense. Yeah, Nick was saying he's like, I can't make that. He's like, I, I'm bulk. He said, I'm bulking right now. Oh yeah, yeah <laughs> he's, he like he's like one ninety. He's like one ninety. Fuck, dude. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. He's he's a big big boy, um, and he's still shredded. He's bulking. He's like shredded. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he's, he looks exactly the same as he looked when he was one seventy. Yeah, he doesn't. He doesn't change. He just muscles just get bigger. Yeah, yeah. Muscles, muscles get bigger. Yeah. It's a dangerous guy. 
He's dangerous. Um, I was able to catch him uh, two weeks ago. Oh, really? Yeah. With what? Yeah, you hear that, Nick? I got you. <laughs> Compared to his 30 subs, I got mine, boy. <laughs> uh, it was a, I was like practicing this move. <clears throat> Uh, I saw the Mendez brothers doing it's a Troy bar from the front headlock. Um, uh-huh. and Nick Matai and I were doing uh front headlock rounds, uh-huh. and um, you've been doing that a lot, yeah, yeah. I was like, all right, this dude gets to my back, I'm, I'm fucked, yeah, because once I do get to your back, just like, god damn, it's fucking, yeah, yeah it's rough. And so I was like, I'm gonna, I'm just gonna throw out this sneaky submission. So I freaking I bike down the underhook like a damn dog on a bump, and I slide into left knee slides underneath, right like those all the way across to the toy bar, and I just fucking grab that shit, dude. And he starts flailing, he rolls to his back, I'm following, and I was able to get it. Sick. Um, and I was like, yeah, I, I, it was it was such a clean arm bar that I, um. He was like kind of studying how I did it mm. because he's going against um, Max Hansen, oh. and apparently Max is like a big like does a lot of Troy weird arm bar. bars like that mm-hmm. and Troy bars. So he he like asked me like hey, where like, how, like where'd that come from? Yeah. I haven't seen uh, an arm bar from that position before, and I was like, hey, it was Mendez, oh, brother. No. Yeah, no, no, fucking come over here, bro. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, I just uh, like like you said, I didn't have to really drill it. I just saw in the video, I saw the Mendez brothers doing it. I did two reps with Jackson. Like like three days before, I was like, I got it, I, I got it. Got it. <laughs> I was like, yeah. still I, trying shit. I got it three times on on Ant too. Oh, sick! I got it three times, and He's so I was like, sub. he is hard to sub, yeah. and so that's what I'm talking about. For me, like like you see me versus him, you're like, oh, like J Rod's gonna smash this guy. Yeah, he's way bigger. He's he's fucking hard to sub. It's hard, it's hard to fucking. He's like an ant. Yeah, he's, hard to yeah. Grab onto him. and he's the yeah. most flexible person. I, I can, Super flexible, he, dude. He is gnarly guard. I'm glad he's back because uh, he was he he hadn't been in the room for like two or three months. Yeah, because uh, he's injured. Um, but now he's back, and I do I do like some of the best rounds for me personally mm-hmm. for like guard passing. That's good. Yeah. His, his guard is just hard to pass. He's Super so flexible, flexible, dude. Yeah. yeah, I'm like man. Yeah, I also I I don't want to. Yes, he's very flexible. He's also very talented. I fucking hate when people are like, oh, you got that because you're strong. Or, well, you were able to retain guard because you're flexible. Mm-hmm. He is flexible. He's also very good at guard. He's, yeah. He's very talented. Yeah, it's so. like you can be flexible, but if you don't know how to use your flexibility, exactly. then, then he knows how to use it. And exactly. he's developed a style that it only takes intelligence to like, oh, I'm flexible here, here, here. All right, let me get good at this type of guard. Like, like, like he he does it all right yeah. to where his flexibility fits perfectly with his style of guard play where it makes it very high level. Yeah. So. Yeah. Yeah. Good training. Good training. Uh, you mentioned the Mendes brothers. So I, I guess I wanted to circle back to, I guess, the trip a little bit. Um, very, very quickly, just some fucking things I wanted to bring up. Yeah. Uh, after weigh-ins, we weigh in. I see Tynan, we, he does the belt thing. Oh, so, oh yeah, I forgot Tynan was there, yeah. Whatever, he's cool. We're, I guess we're best friend, second best friend. <laughs> um, uh, but yeah, he's cool. Um, talk, talk to AOJ, whatever. And then... Oh, that's a Mendez Brothers gym, yeah. right? We're Tynan. Yeah. That's right, that's right. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. Talk to one, one of the Mendez Brothers, talk to Cole, talk to Pato, kind of. Damn, the whole squad I th- I think was Pato there. or Diego Pato? Diego Pato, yeah. That's it's that one, right? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, He's an animal. Yeah. So, talk to those guys. Whatever at Wayans, we leave Wayans. I went my girl with Kai, uh, Cam Donnelly, and then uh, one of his boys. Mm, and wow. we're, look, we're looking for food by a food court near Wayans, and they're like, "Oh yeah, we're gonna get some burgers. Burgers got that fucking thick accent." Yeah, yeah. Um, and I was like, "I don't, I don't want a burger. I need like pasta, fucking mm. f- right day before comp, whatever." Um, so I go to, go to get pasta. I walk in there, in an Italian place. Look over, and uh, Tanya's right there. And he's like, "Oh, let's go. Let's fucking you know, let's eat together." This dude was everywhere. Yeah, yeah I saw so. a story of his of like you on the train. Oh yeah, yeah. I was yeah, like, "Yeah, this yeah. dude's following dude, around." Yeah. I, was like, I was like, <laughs> 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 "Yeah." So, uh, <laughs> <laughs> so we sit down. We eat, we eat together pretty much. Just. Talk to talk to Tynan, um, and and AOJ like all, all the guys from AOJ, oh really all yeah. those guys, um, and then compete next day. I'm like all right, fucking seminars straight off. Wake up early in the morning, got to train to Cardiff, 
I get on the or I get to the train station and I see these guys are all fucking sitting there. I'm walking up to the train, they're sitting there. It's crazy. And uh and I'm like, What's your train? <laughs> and where it turns out we're on the same fucking train. That's wild. So uh yeah. A few interactions with with those guys. So yeah, cool Squad. people. Yeah. Cool people. Um Murder Burger. That's what <laughs> Cam Donnelly was saying. Terrible or not terrible accent, but just so <laughs> terrible fucking, accent, so terrible. hard to understand. Yeah, so yeah. hard to understand. Yeah, yeah. Um, I wonder what other places in the world where if they heard our accent, they'd be like, "What the hell are you saying, bro?" I had a lot of people asking me if I was Australian. Really? In in Europe? In Europe? Uh, it was like pretty even with they're like, "You're from uh, you're from America," and then the other half was like, "You're Australian." I interesting like, i didn't know i i don't think i do I, I don't i don't you don't but i can hear it how it's like 99 percent american and like some one percent is australian mm. i don't know yeah i don't know like i feel like so, some of the things i say you can hear a little bit of jersey oh yeah that yeah, i guess yeah. that would be considered american if, it's, if you sound new jersey you're like oh american yeah because you, def- you could definitely hear New Jersey. I don't know. I don't know. Um, last thing. I had horse meat. You ate a horse. I had a horse. Oh, my God. I had a horse. It was pretty tough. Diabolical. <laughs> it was pretty tough, like pretty gamey. Um, taste wasn't bad. No. It just tastes like beef pretty much or maybe venison closer mm. it's supposed to be like super nutritious nutrient dense mm. um yeah i would eat it again if I, I would eat it if i had to how's our boy doing capri capri he's doing good he, you still have him the fish the hermit crab oh Wait, I got, ba- hold I got on. bad news. <laughs> <laughs> hold on. Bad news. <laughs> hold on. You already got the fish? Oh, f- yeah. The f- the f- I got the fish that th- that day, I think. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, my God. Okay. Where's where's the hermit crab? Okay. The guy who deserves the bowl. Okay. <laughs> so, hermit crabs can't be submerged in water. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, interesting. So, uh... Yeah, I got him by the water, and you. If you guys don't know, I don't know if we talked about this. We did not. Okay, so we talked about me getting rocks, whatever. I snatched up a uh, hermit crab shell, like a little hermit crab shell, whatever. I see him in there. I'm like, his life for the beauty of my (laughs) shell collection. My shell collection. I was like. I'm taking him. <laughs> There's more of you than there are of my shell collection. You'll be, you'll be fine. <laughs> so I put him in the bag with the with the rocks, tie it up, fucking put in my luggage. Don't open up the bag once for like a <laughs> solid week. And then I get home, open up the, the rocks, start clean them, and then put them in the tank. Mm-hmm. I'm cleaning them, and this motherfucker's still alive. <laughs> that's when I – oh, yeah, that's yeah, when I pulled I, him out. I yeah. pulled him out. When Josh came. Yeah, I saw That it. motherfucker was still alive. Yeah. I was like, there's a hermit crab in here. Yeah. <laughs> Next day, he was dead. <laughs> what? <laughs> Next Damn. day, I pick him up and he just plops right out. Damn. Um, so, yeah, I, I starved. I guess he starved to death. He starved wow. To death. So, we, we saw him on his last day. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. I flushed him down, down the toilet, gave him a salute. I said, thank you for your service. Um, Shall we meet again someday? Shall we meet again? Yeah. Yeah. Maybe he'll haunt me in the afterlife. Yeah, I hope so. Just constantly <laughs> pinching me. <laughs> so you were like, all right, I'm going to buy a fish now. <laughs> <laughs> Literally. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, clean up all the rocks, put them in there, and then I put up a fish tank. Um, I don't know why, but, okay, so I'll lay out all the rocks mm-hmm. in the tank. It's beautiful. Clean them all so there's no issues with, like, Algae or whatever, and then I buy a plant and a fish, put the fish in, put the plant in, and it's foggy. It's like uh, the water's cloudy. Hmm. Put a little bit of tap water in, but I also put filtered water that's supposed to purify the rest of the water. Uh, okay. Like it's made for that fish. Yeah. Or whatever. 
and um, it's turning foggy, like cloudy. Um, it's not terrible, but I would like to have it clear for the fish. Mm-hmm. Um, for your, for your, well, for his living, you for know, your I, personal gain, so you can see the fish from for, the couch. For me to definitely <laughs> see the, the fish, absolutely, but also for him to be able to see me. You know, the, the reason why we bought this fish, it was way, way cooler fish. At PetSmart, way cooler. I was gonna fish. say, what kind of fish is it? It's so we were looking at a variety of beta, beta fish, right? Mm-hmm. Classic. You can't get multiple of them because they'll just they'll eat fight. Each, yeah, they'll yeah. Just kill each other. So we're looking at this wall of beta fish. I'm seeing all these sick looking fish. All these sick. I'm like, I don't want to name this guy. This guy, he's all black. He's got like white streaks on him. Mm. I'm like, I'm gonna name him Death. <laughs> I'm like this is the one, yeah. <laughs> and uh, and my woman, she's like, but this one, this one keeps looking at us. We were at PetSmart for like an hour, and we walked by, and every time we walk by, the motherfuckers looking at us. Really? We walk by, we walk back, we walk by, we're back. He's always looking at us wow. every time, looking at us. So we had to get him. Well, what what do you look? Well, I guess he's I can... not. He's not that impressive. <laughs> He ain't deaf. He's just he just like uh no, he's not death. He's not death. He's de- he doesn't look like just looks like a normal fish. <laughs> I'm not going know? there, dude. He's be like a fucking little sardine. <laughs> <laughs> nah, he's not like um Yeah, there's some of the ones look super cool. Yeah. And then this one was kind of lackluster, but I was like he has personality. Yeah, he's, he's he's got yeah. us. So like, All right. He's got charisma. We'll do it. We'll get him. Um so that's Capri. Nice. That's Capri. I like that. Uh, yeah, Capri rocks. Um, oh, yeah. <clears throat> but the, the fog, uh, people say that it can be the with the tank by the window. And they say sometimes it'll be the if there's sunlight hitting the the tank, it'll it can get foggy, mm. which is weird. But. Um, I guess that that's a possibility as well as one other thing. Oh, overfeeding. If you overfeed, then the it can make the tank foggy. Mm. Um, which maybe I've been overfeeding. I don't know. I feed him twice a day. Yeah, like few few fucking crumbles. And you named it Capri because the rocks and shells you got from Capri. From Capri. Yeah. For those of you listening, yep. Capri, that's why Italy. it's Capri. Um, yeah. So. I'll, I'll show you after. I, I would gladly want to see after. But I, I swear to God, I, he's just upside he's down. He's going to be dead. I know. Yep. Yep. <laughs> yep. I would not be surprised. I fed him this morning. Um, There was a meme that you replied to or commented on a while ago. I sent. And it was this meme of just like a, an animated guy in a tuxedo, blonde hair, just kind of like looking in the distance, very elegant looking. And it's like, all my all my victories are God's doing, and all my mistakes are mine alone, like that. And you replied and said, "I want to talk about this." Do you remember what was going through your head when you said that? Not a fucking clue. <laughs> Not a fucking clue. <laughs> Darn it! I waited too long. Um, <clears throat> I waited too long. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what you said. So I was trying to, I was going to try and wrap back around to that and, and see what you were okay. thinking, thinking during that. I yeah, just like it. I think it, that's a mm. that's a healthy perspective, mm. um, but also at the same time, like uh, a thought process like that is essentially just taking accountability for your actions, right? Mm-hmm. But also, why would why would you take a hundred percent of accountability for your all of your mistakes? But then not take at least a percentage of at least some percentage. Now I'm not saying a hundred percent. Take some percentage of your wins as your accountability. Yeah, I, I was just about to ask you the same thing, but you beat me to the punch. Was uh, I was going to say, yeah, it's kind of weird how there's one thing about taking responsibility for your actions, but why am I told to only take responsibility for my actions when they're bad, but not when they're good? Exactly. Like where's where's some of my credit? Because I did make those choices to be good. So why did I make, I made those choices to be good, but yet I'm supposed to be like, no, it's not my doing, it's God's doing. Mm -hmm. But then if I do something bad, it's like, oh, it's completely my fault. Yeah. So it's like, uh, do I get a little bit of credit here? 
And some people would be like, oh no, like offer everything up to God. Yeah. I don't, I don't know what my stance exactly would be on that. Cause a part of me would be like, you do have to pat yourself on the back sometimes. And I think you do deserve to pat yourself on the back because it is fact, it is factual that, you know, if you believe in God and stuff, you do have free will. So we do make choices on our own because we want to be good. God didn't make me make this choice. Yes. I did. And it's like, um, I think the idea that comes from offer everything up to God, is just the fact of like, you should be grateful or lucky for everything you do. Even the good things that, that God has given you free will to be your own person or, or you can even go farther and more cliche of like, well, you wouldn't even be here if he didn't give you life. Yeah. So you couldn't even make that good choice or do that good thing. If, if you weren't alive or you weren't here. So what, what do you do? Me personally, it's like, you'd have to ask yourself, well, why do I want credit for that good thing? Why do I want credit so bad? Because you did it. Because I did it. And whether I get credit or not does not change that what I just did was good or bad. Mm -hmm. So why do I want credit? Because it's like, well, I want people to know that I did that. And it's like, well, it doesn't change the fact that what you did was good. So why do you still want the credit? And it's like, well... It makes me feel good. Yeah. So it's still, a, I think because it's a selfish act to want the credit, which is why they're like, just offer up to God. Because okay. the only reason why you want the credit is for your selfish feeling of what well, makes me feel good. Mm -hmm. Or it's like, well, you did that good act to make other people feel good, not yourself. Yeah. So it's like, but we're human. You know what I mean? Yeah. I, I, I'll, I'll be the first one to admit, I do things that are good because I like the way it makes me feel. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's like, I don't always do it because like, oh, I want to be a good person to those people. Sometimes like, I don't give a fuck. It makes me feel good. Yeah. But then I try and catch myself to be like, um, that, that free seminar. It's funny, that free seminar I did for kids. I literally had this exact thought process on one of my walks in the morning mm. of like, why do I, do I only, is doing good things being selfish? Like that was my thought. So I was like, I need to do something that I necessarily don't want to do. So I started thinking of things like, <clears throat> what can I do that's considered good, but I don't want to do it. Yeah. Then that, then now I know I'm doing something good that's not selfish. Okay. So I, I thought of like- A free oh, kid summer. Yeah, free kid summer. It's like, I like working with kids, but man, a, a room full of kids that aren't listening to me, blah, yeah. blah, blah. And I, you're not making money. Yeah, and I'm, and I'm not making money. I'd rather be doing something else. So I need to do that. Now I know that what I'm doing is purely good. I see. That's how I would describe that whole. Interesting. Yeah. Hmm. Maybe I need to change. <laughs> it's that. That was just me having a good moment. But most of the time, it's me. Bad. It's yeah. It's me being. I don't think it's necessarily necessarily bad. It's just like a different perspective. Yeah, a different perspective. It's like it, whether like you could you could flip the coin. Whether I want credit or not, if I do get credit or not, let's say I do get credit, it still doesn't change the fact that what I did was good. It can go both ways. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, I wouldn't say there's really a wrong perspective, but one, one is going to give you more joy than the other. Not happiness, but joy. I think when you do something... Like pure. Yes. When you do something good to satisfy yourself, it makes you happy. But when you do something that's good for these other people, not necessarily yourself, then you feel joyful. You feel joy, which I think joy lasts longer than happiness. So I think it's a good mixture to do both. I'd say do both. Do some things that you make yourself feel good and then do some things that you do that it makes other people feel good, but not necessarily yourself. Like with Teresa, there's times where it's like, do you want to go with me to Ulta? Look at makeup? No, I don't want to go. <laughs> I'm not going to enjoy myself. <laughs> I want to play video games. Yeah. <laughs> but if doing this act does good for you, then, then I'll, then I'll go, you know, if it makes you happy, if it makes you happy, then I'll so. go. And then, you know, so it's, you can do a mixture of both. And I think both are good. Interesting. Yeah. My brain hurts a little bit after that. That's yeah. Of My brain would hurt too, but I've gone through this, these thoughts <laughs> a lot. So <laughs> yeah. When do you think, uh, do you ever think you think too much? Yes. To the point where it stresses you out or anything? Uh, yes. That's why I play video games. <laughs> <laughs> I play video games. It's my time of where like my brain just turns sharp. Mm -hmm. and I just focus on this and you know what I mean? But the second the game comes off or something, it's just like, it's like, 
All right, all right. Back, back to, <laughs> back to human development. Yes, yes. So interesting. Yeah. What's going on? Oh, we're, we're, we're a bit in. This. We're a bit in. All right. We got the, we got the simple man coming up. Yep, yep. Coming up next. Are you gonna be on that as well? Yeah, I think so. All right. So I guess we'll both be on the simple man uh, episode for next week. Uh. We've only got two sponsors now, guys. Uh, if you have a company, please. Please. <laughs> <laughs> we need your help. <laughs> uh, yeah, if you have a company, you want to you know, sponsor the podcast, message the Doghouse Podcast Instagram or maybe one of us. Hopefully, we'll see it. Um, and, uh, yeah, we could get an ad going for you guys. Um Hopefully, make you guys some money. And we have over hundreds of thousands of views across all our episodes, according to our data off YouTube. So, <laughs> if that ain't an opportunity, I don't know what is. <laughs> hundreds of thousands of eyes looking at your products weekly. Think about it. Think about it. Yeah. With that being said, uh, thank you to Collie Buds and St. Pasta Sauce. Collie Buds, they've been sponsoring me for a while now. They have. Um, Magnets for your ears. You drain your fucking ear. Drain that nasty ear. Drain that nasty fucking yonky looking ear. <laughs> uh, turn it into a ravioli when you drain her. <laughs> and put those magnets on so you have no more issues with inflammation uh, when you have cauliflower ear. And then St. Pasta Sauce. Some of the best pasta sauce I've ever had in my entire life. Um, in order to get yourself or get your hands on some of their products, you have to subscribe to their email listing um, to keep up to date with their releases, right? Their stuff, the moment they drop, their stuff is gone. Off the shelves, gone. Quick. So in order to keep It wouldn't up be to like date, that if it wasn't good either. The exactly. fact that consistently it's always being pulled off the shelf, it's like people, are, they want more. <laughs> exactly. Exactly, yeah. So uh, please support the uh, companies that support your dogs. Uh, we really appreciate it. Um, and as always, thank you guys for tuning in tuning in to the Doghouse Podcast. Uh, yeah, we'll see you on the next one. Peace.